going on everybody? It's Rural YJ coming at you with a brand new video and it's been a while since I gave everybody a new bird up deck list. And that's the big problem when it comes to making a new bird up deck list is that it's never really new. It's just like a different variant or like a slightly different spin with like one or two ratios change, which I mean can end up being pretty influential overall to the list. But right now I feel like bird up isn't really a great deck to play. Castra is an infuriating matchup as it turns off half of your entire deck and then blocks off your zones until the other half is turned off as well, meaning you either have to draw the right amount of hand traps or board breakers in order to stop them, otherwise you're going to be in for a really bad time. However, I have had a lot of requests for a new Brit Up deck profile, and I did go back to the deck for a locals. Uh, basically because I was getting completely swept with Branded, uh, I ended up having an opponent like cheat uh, in my first round and then the second one I just drew the absolute worst hands possible. And so I swapped back over to Bird Up and I had an absolute blast. I forgot just how fun this deck was. And so even with the annoying Castra matchup, I'm here to bring you all my tri Lyralus slash Bird Up deck profile for the April 2023 format. So let's go ahead and get right into it. Starting us off, we have the Lyralusk monsters and as always, we start with three copies of Turquoise Warbler. We also have three copies of Cobalt Sparrow, two copies of Celestine Wagtail, two copies of Sapphire Swallow, and one copy of Barrel Canary. Now, longtime fans of the channel or viewers in general will probably be looking at me like I'm absolutely insane. Aurora, you finally changed your bird ratios. Yeah, even though it's not very much, I have cut down on the Lyralisk ratios by a single copy of Barrel Canary, and that's because Barrel Canary is kind of terrible this format. Don't get me wrong, making Assembled against literally any other deck is so free with this card. It is an absolute monster at going second. But the Castra matchup makes this card completely dead, because not only are you like not going to access your graveyard, Half the time, Zeus isn't even an option because they're going to rip it with Diablosis. On top of that, we're also not playing Ensemble in the main this format in this list because it does nothing against Castra. Uh, by the way, did you know the Castra Inherent Summons are not once per turn? So basically, we only really need the one copy of Barrel Canary. And even if it gets hit by like the Diablosis or something, again, it doesn't really matter because the card sucks against Castra. You could side like the second copy if you're still like gung-ho about the second copy, especially if you do put the Ensemble in your side and then put it into the main games two or three. I think honestly one is all you really need. All of the other ones though are just way too important not to play the ratios that I've always played. Uh, you know, Turquoise obviously your main starter, Cobalt is your main um, like combo piece, sorry I should say. Uh, Celestine is your alternative combo piece, and then Sapphire is one of the best extenders in the entire deck. So other than the Barrel Canary going down to one, I think honestly everything else should remain unchanged. On to the Tri-Brigades, we have three copies of Tri-Brigade Fractal, three copies of Tri-Brigade Nerval, one copy of Tri-Brigade Kit, and one copy of Tri-Brigade Karis. So this is really standard here. I don't know if in my breakdown, I think I was, but in my breakdown, I think I was playing two of each of Kit and Karis. That was because during tier limit format, you really wanted to see these cards not get hit off the Ashizus. And if you did, you wanted to have an extra, you know, Kit getting hit off the Ashizus is really good, but you like to have the second copy, you know? But even now, even with Diablosis effectively being a significantly better Ashizu card, we don't want to play multiple copies of these because this archetype, this entire section of your deck is completely dead against Castra. Unless you can out the Arise Heart with one of the board breakers that we are maining or, you know, in games two or three, you're not going to be able to use your Tri-Brigade cards unless you're using Nerval for a, like, rank one fodder or you're using Karis for an extender to like, I guess, pray to go into Shurig or something. But this engine just like, completely sucks against Castra, so we're playing like the bare minimum that you want to play. Uh, it's still really good against literally every other matchup, of course, and going first it's, is like your main powerhouse. Uh, but when it comes to going second against Castra, it's really not favorable to open. Also, I just realized, I think this is the first uh, bird up deck profile I've done on the new map. We got Kit and Kit here. So another thing that's been slightly tweaked in terms of ratios is two copies of DD Crow. So as you know, during tier format, and for the longest time, I was playing three copies of this card, because it is still a really good hand trap, but against decks like, you know, Kashra, of course, I know I keep mentioning it, but like, obviously, and then uh, against Sprite, now that Elf is gone, and like, they don't really care about it as much, and like, a bunch of other decks, DD Crow isn't very fantastic. I mean, it's still a really good hand trap, but searchable, so like, why would you not play at least one? One is the amount that I played uh, when Bird Up first came out, actually. But I decided to keep it at 2 instead of 3 because at the end of the day, not only is it a hand trap that isn't a once per turn, 
but it's also a level one wing beast, meaning that you can normal summon this or summon it off of a sapphire, which I've done many, many times, in order to get free rank one fodder, which is good for poking for game with assembled or poking for more damage, or when it comes to obviously just going for your recital sterling plays. Honestly though, depending on your local scene, you can just absolutely tweak this ratio as much as you want, absolutely play at least one copy uh, but when it comes to playing two three whatever just play whatever feels right so a format dependent choice that i ended up doing was maining the fabled cerberel i had this in my side during tier format because while arc light is absolutely absurd against tier it's kind of like something you don't really want to commit to because this card sucks to draw going second like, it is absolutely horrendous. Not to mention that I started blinding second during tier format with this deck, which is something that I kind of like back and forth on right now in this current format because Castra is just so deadly when it goes first. But right now, it's just so important to have access to that Omni Negate, especially in a format where disruptions, you don't need a bunch of them in order to succeed. You just need to have really well-timed ones and really powerful ones. So having access to the Omni Negate is very powerful. Not to mention that you don't have to worry about Bestials or anything, which is another reason why I cited this instead of maining it. Because if they Bestial this, then your combo is completely screwed. But Bestials are absolutely horrendous right now. And like, you know, back then during tier format, they would uh, side the Bestials out after game one because they're just like, oh, you're playing a deck that doesn't really care about lights or darks in their grave. And so then you'd side this in comfortably going first because you know they wouldn't have any Bestials or anything for you. And so without Bestials, you don't really have to care too much about having this in your side. It's a perfectly fine choice to have in the main now. Uh, it is still really annoying to draw going second. I mean, the best it ends up being is like access code fodder. But at the end of the day, making the arc light is just so important. That does it for the monsters. Onto the back row. As always, we have three copies of Liralusk Bird Call and three copies of Fire Formation Tanky. Very, very standard here, and as you might be able to see, I finally blinged out all of my tankies to Secret Rare. I'm very excited about that. I love how it looks. Uh, but these are your best starter and consistency cards in the entire deck. Drawing multiples of either really hurts, especially tanky, but honestly, it's not really that big of a deal. I think both of these cards are the perfect ratio at three. For our power one ofs, we have one Foolish Burial, one One for One, and one Called by the Grave. Uh, again, very standard here. These haven't changed in, like what was it like almost two years now actually yeah it's been almost two years since bird up came out that's crazy uh but these cards are very powerful foolish burial and like, actually all these cards are kind of dead against castro but they're still way too strong not to play foolish burial being an extra copy of fractal especially if you get ashed very fantastic there one for one is still the most broken card in the deck and then speaking of ash called by being called by it, it's called by <laughs> another format dependent choice to round off the back row in the like main section of the deck I am back on maining the one copy of Tri-Brigade Revolt. Searchable, really powerful card. It's actually almost always live against Castra because they're going to be banishing your things, and newsflash, this specials your banished things. So while well, you won't get the floating if they sell the Arise Heart up, and obviously you'd have to play around the zones being locked, so you probably have to out those more importantly, you can still get a free Shurig banish and a big 3k body, especially if you hit the Arise Heart. Then if it floats, you have like plenty of access to your follow-up plays, etc., etc., not to mention that combined with the arc light, you're already going to be going for the bear room and stuff for the combo anyway, so there's really no need to just not play the revolt in the main. I was siding it last format, but it's still a really good disruption card uh, going first, though technically it is up to you. And with all of those cards, we ended up having around eight flex spots, which, which can end up being more or less depending on the ratios you play or if you care about being at exactly 40 cards. And for my flex spots, I decided to play three copies of Lava Golem, three copies of Evenly Matched, and two copies of Triple Tactics Talent. So these cards have been interesting. So all of these I played when I was playing Blind Second Bird Up during tier format, which was an absolute blast to play. I loved going Second Bird Up. Uh, but right now, it's just a bit iffy because all of these cards are fantastic. Lava Golem being a big 3k body that at the cost of your normal summon, which you don't really care about in this deck very much, you can just get rid of two big problem cards on the board, and you do a thousand damage during the next standby. If you even get to the next standby when you use your Recital Starlings to crash into it, really good for going second. Evenly matched is evenly matched, quite possibly the best board breaker in the entire game. And then Triple Tactics Talent is wonderful in this deck. It's like my favorite uh, card to play in the deck because just being able to draw extra cards after your opponent ashes you or steal something going second or more importantly, after your opponent ashes you and you still have full combo, you can rip a card out of their hand, which could be an important board breaker, especially if you want to get uh, your Omni Negate not get baited out. However, the main issue with these cards stems from the fact that you're still allowing your opponent to go off, so anything 
they do on their turn that isn't just a direct end board piece, but rather immediately disrupts you, such as Diablosis, Unicorn, etc., they're kind of a problem. So that's why I'm mostly experimenting with this right now. I think Lava Golem is something I do definitely want to keep in the main, but evenly I might bump to the side and then uh, put three copies of Imperm in here. I think Imperm is a really good card in this deck and it's just really good against Castra specifically, especially for hitting things like the Unicorn to stop them from playing in the first place or hitting the Diablosis if you suspect that they have extension. You know, keeping your Zeus life in your extra deck is one of the most important things for the deck. So these flex spots are completely up to you. You can play Ash, Imperm, you could play Nib, even though I recommend it more as a side card for this deck due to Turquoise. You can basically use these spots for anything. Like I said, this is what I'm experimenting with. I might go for Imperm over the Evenlies, but I'm not too sure just yet. That does it for the main deck. So I am at 40 cards again. I haven't been at 40 cards in a while. I'm pretty sure I've been at like 45 to 47, 42 bare minimum, because I've just been packing it full of like 10 board breakers. It was hilarious. Uh, but on to the extra deck, we have, of course, starting us off, two copies of Recital Starling and one copy of Assembled Nightingale. As I did mention, we are no longer playing the Ensemble Blue in the main. We have put it in the side for certain matchups. You know, Sprite is a really good deck to play it against. But these, of course, are your mandatory must plays. Two copies of Recital. Now that it's at two, you can just do so much more with the deck. And then Assembled being able to go into Zeus and protect yourself is something that I've been using a lot more lately absolutely amazing. I'm also still on the Utopic Future and Utopic Draco Future package. Grr, I haven't been able to pick up my secret rare. I won't be able to get it until uh, the day this video goes up, actually, at Locals. But I did manage to get my secret rare Utopic Draco Future. Look at this card. It's so pretty. Uh, anyways, this is still a really strong package, most importantly due to Nibiru still running around. If Nib wasn't such a prominent hand trap against things like Castra branded literally everything right now that isn't named Labyrinth, I'd probably consider putting this card in the side, because honestly, one thing I've been really enjoying about Bird Up is that a lot of the stuff that I used to just remove flat out, I've just been bumping it to the side and then putting it in for matchups. Like, honestly, it's been really good. But this is something that I'd consider moving so I can fit things like the Ensemble Blue in here or, you know, just anything else. You know, I did cut the Horus Velger as well from the extra deck, as you'll see. But with Nib so prominent, going into this before accessing any of your real plays and then, like, baiting out your opponent. But it's also still just a really powerful card. Massive 3k body, amazing protection, Monster Negate, and Steel. The biggest issue with this card is that it's run into Triple T so many times. Like, I'll negate with, like, Appaloosa or something like that, and then they'll just, uh, Triple T, take Draco Future, and great, now they have a big 3k body with protection that also it can negate and steal my things. But still an absolutely amazing card to play. Wrapping up the Xyz monsters, of course we have the one copy of Divine Arsenal Zeus. Of course, your most potent card in your entire extra deck, and the thing that Castro will be trying to snipe out of there the most. One of the most obnoxious things is when they do that, though, because, you know, it's like your main out to their board. So I'm considering if I do remove the Draco future, if Nib ends up being, like, a lot worse, like, come next ban list or something, which, you know, some more copium. Uh, I might drop the Draco future and then put a second copy of Zeus in, should Diablosis still be running around. Otherwise, I think the one is fine, especially for most matchups, though I wouldn't complain about a bigger extra deck in order to fit a second. On to the Lynx, starting off with All Mirage, uh, a card that I will still stand by. I'll fight tooth and nail over All Mirage. I've had some people say to play like Anima or something instead. Yeah, tell me how I'm gonna make Anima with Tri-Brigade Kit. Like, I, I would be like, delighted to hear. But just using All Mirage for when your hand is kind of mediocre otherwise and taking something like a Nerval Kit, etc. And then at least going into some form of smaller combo. Really, really nice there. Even if we aren't aren't doing the Ensemble Blue Draco Future combo with it anymore, which was a really cool combo. We also have one copy of Farajit and one copy of Bear Brum. Very standard here. Farajit being Farajit, Bear Brum searching your revolt, and being an amazing extender even if you're not playing the revolt. I really, really love both of these cards. While it isn't on our main end board anymore, unless we're going for like certain combos in game two or three, we are still playing the Double Dragon Lords, of course. Really, really potent at breaking boards going second, but it can also still serve as a disruption going first if you go for either a different combo, you're in game two for a different combo, or in case you draw extra extension like a fractal or a kit on top of your end board, you can actually go for this as well on top of everything else you already have. Really, really nice there. We are playing the revolt again, so we are on two copies of Shurig here. I'm really, really mad because I finally managed to find a secret Shurig at my locals. I was super happy to uh, play it because I was playing the one copy, and then I ended up playing revolt again, so now I need to find a second. One copy of Appaloosa and one copy of Access Code for your Link 4s. Again, as you could probably see, we are not playing the Horus Velger anymore, so the Access Code is probably going to be lo a lot less potent than usual. 
but we are still citing it for those certain other games, but usually you won't really need access code to be that massive, and if you do, that could be something that you just edit your extra deck for in the first place. And then Appaloosa, until we get some more back, is of course going to be one of our main end board pieces. Finally, of course, as mentioned, we have the one copy of Herod of the Arclight. Really powerful floodgate against a lot of lesser decks, you know, like the mirror match and stuff like that. Or in case that you're going as something like Eldritch, which can also be really annoying. Uh, but most importantly, being an Omni Negate, absolutely huge. Stopping things like Evenly, Triple T, uh, any sort of really big blowout card awesome to have in the extra deck. Well everybody, it looks like that is going to officially do it for the Burduck deck profile for April 2023. I hope you all did enjoy. This deck is so much fun, even in a format where the matchups aren't really the greatest for it. I do think that you can easily snag some locals wins and maybe even some regional tops with this deck if you give it a shot. Remember also to be sure to check out my Burduck breakdown if you haven't already. It's like one of my most viewed videos on the channel. I put a lot of work into it. Over two hours of Burduck content there. I also want to use this opportunity once more to plug my Patreon which you can get some awesome benefits if you go check it out, link in the description, while at the same time supporting me directly with barely any money out of your pocket. But with that out of the way, that's going to do it for the video. If you liked it, please sure to leave a like as well as put this video and the channel into Turk Amended. And if you like this content and you want to see more like it, like the rest of my deck profiles, then perhaps consider subscribing because we're on our way to 5,000 subscribers by the end of 2023. Not to mention it supports the channel more than anything else and it's absolutely free. Once again, thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. This is Aurora, signing off. Thank you.